Gulf of Tonopec is something that I didn't really know about when we started the trip south, but as we uh, got further south into Mexico, more and more cruisers started talking about the gap winds. So we started to learn about what the gap winds actually are. And they're basically areas um, in southern Mexico and Nicaragua where the uh, Pacific side of the ocean is very closely connected to the Caribbean side. And so the weather on the Caribbean side blows across a flat, narrow piece of land and then blasts out into the Pacific in kind of a, an intensified wind pattern. Turns out this time of year, the year that we're crossing through that area, these wind patterns are actually the strongest. And in the case of the Ta Tawanapec, they'll blow at near hurricane force sometimes. And they'll blow for several days and then they'll be absolutely calm for several days. And that's when you gotta sneak across. So you gotta time it really well. It's about 6.30 in the morning and uh, this is our sixth day uh, on the ocean. We left Huatuco, Mexico on uh, the 11th and then we sailed across the Gulf of Tonopec, timed the weather just right, got across that, and then we went um, by Guatemala, by El Salvador, now we're crossing by Honduras, <clears throat> and we're about 15 miles from Nicaragua, which is our destination. So beautiful. It's the most idyllic, quiet, like, serene, like, I don't even know which word to use, but when we just, like, drove into the mangroves, it was like, even the birds were more silent, you know, like, there was no pangas, no tourists, no anything, it was just a wild beach with, like, one lonely dude, like, laying on it. Well, I'm going to go into the port captain's office here, so, it's like there's a restaurant down there, and I'll see you guys down there, alright? Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. So what's what's your plan now exactly? I mean, you're uh, Leon. Leon. Espanol. Yeah. And Learn Spanish and make it up as I go along. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. One more time with more intensity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at that. <laughs> We're going to the bus and. Uh, it leaves from right here behind you. And once we get our car, we're going to drive for several hours through the capital to Granada, which is a uh, colonial city that I guess is very beautiful, maybe a bit touristy. And then from there, we're going to go out into Lake Nicaragua. And out there is an island called Omnitepi, which is two volcanoes and some neat little towns. So we just got into our rental car and we're right now we're driving through the streets of Chinandega and there are tuk tuk bike guys everywhere, there's bicyclists, there's uh, basically trucks, buses, I mean people, old women in canes, open air markets. No street signs, we have no idea where we're going. No stop signs, none of the lights work. <laughs> but uh, so far so good, we made about four blocks and we did get insurance. We have $1,000 deductible. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Okay, we had what you would call a cultural learning experience just now. <laughs> so in the United States, obviously, if you're in a park or a public place and your dog poops on the ground, it is culturally appropriate to pick that up with a piece of trash or a doggy bag and put it in the trash can, keep that park clean. Turns out we do that, and all of a sudden a bunch of old ladies start yelling at us. Next thing we know, there's a cop telling us that not only can we not throw the poop in the trash, but you cannot actually have your dog poop at all. And uh, that's a problem. The, the strays running around, we saw four or five of those. I guess they're exempt from this rule, but the tourist dogs cannot poop in public spaces. And we had a good learning experience there. Yeah, and I was like, I don't speak Spanish, man. How about I just go? And he's like, yeah, you should just go. I'm like, good, we'll go. <laughs> Bit of a stormy sea out there, really. We got 
got in here uh, late last night in the dark. Now that the light's up, we can see the beautiful ocean out there and the jungle and the two volcanoes on either side, so it's pretty neat to be on the island. And uh, we talked to Carlos, guy who owns this place, and he said there's a group of people who are gonna climb the volcano today. So we joined in on that, and uh, we're getting ready to, to go get some breakfast, and we're gonna get started, so. What was your name again, where are you from? Nicholas, I'm from Canada. Ah, excellent. <laughs> well, we're at the halfway point right now. We just crossed by the lookout and we lost about half of our party went back at this point. So now it's it's uh, me, Yatta, our guide, and our friend Nicholas from Canada. Back. Yeah. So how many hours do we have to go back, do you think? Four hours. Four hours. I think. Yeah. And it's pretty muddy, it's pretty steep. It's going to yeah. be... Yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> okay. All right, vamos? Muy tranquilo, vamos. Okay, see you. We learned some interesting things about the tourism industry. It's growing about 10% per year. So, as you can imagine, I mean, it's a massive force that's gonna transform this country. On the other hand, they have what they view as a bit of a problem with their tourism model right now, which is that most of the tourists who are coming to Nicaragua are, you know, tourists without as much money as, say, the ones who come to Costa Rica. So uh, these people maybe stay for longer and they don't spend nearly as much money. And so the, the government sees the big challenge right now as trying to transition their tourism model into one that really can capitalize on the tourists who do come to Nicaragua and, and show a lot more profit for uh, the industry. 